I'm Bianca Lemus, and welcome to Tuning In. On today's show, we have two centers that are adding to the diversity of Cal State Long Beach. We'll be speaking with Mary Beth Perdue, from the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgendered Student Center, and Andy Espinosa from the Educational Opportunity Program. There are more types of diversity besides ethnicity and race, including sexual orientation, people with disabilities, and faith, which may not be discussed as often, but are still important when it comes to providing a diverse campus at Cal State Long Beach. The Interfaith Center at Long Beach State is a collaboration of different religious organizations that provide a place for students and various faiths to discuss topics or make friends. In Brotman Hall, the oh Disabilities God, Office she? focuses on making CSULB an accessible campus and helps students with disabilities succeed in classrooms by working with the professor and students to create a successful environment. Another important center is the LBGT Resource Center, which is making way for full inclusion, acceptance, and safety for CSULB lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, transsexual, intersex, and queer students. Major events that LBGT have been a part of include National Coming Out Day, Transgender Day, a Remembrance, World AIDS Day, Day of Silence, and Long Beach Pride. <laughs> Today's first guest comes from CSULB's LBGT Student Resource Center. I'd like to welcome to the show, Mary Beth Perdue. Welcome, Mary Beth. Thank you very much. And your uh, student center is LBGT, and you guys are currently going through a renovation of the name by adding a Q, which stands for queer. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, so thank you for asking. That's really important. So we're looking at adding the Q to the acronym. It's ever growing because we're ever changing. Um, Q stands for queer. It can also stand for questioning, but mostly just queer. Um, and it's political in a sense. It's it's also more um, in inclusive of you know politics and gender identity and sexual identity. Um, and it has to do with also culture. It's a bit of a trendy word at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is, and I think the reason why it's becoming trendy is because people are sick of lab labeling themselves, you know. Um, it's very a fluid term. It's also very inclusive of straight people. Queer doesn't necessarily mean that you are a lesbian or that you are a gay male or that you are transgender or bi. It could be many things at one time. And for people who are not quite familiar, familiar with the community, they might question why are there so many terms? like. Mm -hmm. They want to, be, but why is it important to have so many terms for everyone who is different? I think that's awesome that you brought that up because a lot of times people, they're like, I'm so confused. Mm -hmm. And I understand it, but at the same time, it's really important for anyone who is different or has, um, you know, they're, they're growing, they're changing. It's always really important to be able to acknowledge that about a community that as you know the community is learning more about themselves and our society in general is being more open to sexuality i would say um more so than it has been particularly in, in lesbian and gay individuals and transgender people um so it can be confusing and maybe a bit intimidating but it, it does serve a purpose for the people who you know use those terms for themselves and your center is very big on being inclusive. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me in what ways? Yeah, so like this semester to, on Wednesday on the 20th, it's Transgender Day of Remembrance. And so we're, we're going to do a screening in the CBA 124 uh, Diagnosing Difference to acknowledge transgender community as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have two student organizations, Delta Lambda Phi, which is a Greek male fraternity, progressive male fraternity. And then we have GSA, which is transitioning to, you know, Queers and Allies. That's, they're transitioning their name. Um, and I work with those organizations to promote their events as well to help um, fund events for them. Last semester, we put on two events. Um, the center also solely does every year National Coming Out Week. So I type up the list and we have in student life and development um, 
where the center is housed through. Mm -hmm. We have graphic designers, and so they make the atlas after I put it together. Um, we do So we do that, and we do Transgender Day of Remembrance. And what exactly is the atlas? So the atlas is kind of fun. It's just mm -hmm. a way to create for the public an awareness that is much needed. For people who are not aware of gay history or LGBT history or, or queer history in general, mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's been a very suppressed group, and so to be able to be out and be safe is really important. So it's just to create awareness that, you know, yeah, we are a campus, and uh, people are gay, and not everyone is straight. People are lesbian. People are transgender. Um, it just kind of to create an awareness and maybe a little bit of, you know, integrity for people. And something that currently came out on the Daily 49er is that mm -hmm. LBGT is actually having a monthly meeting mm -hmm. for for students. Mm -hmm. What have you guys uh, spoke about during those meetings recently? I don't attend those meetings because um, I keep myself separate from the student organizations. Mm -hmm. That's from uh, Queers and Allies, a student organization, and once a month inside their meetings, they meet in the USU 306 at 4 o'clock, mm -hmm. and once a month, I think it's the last Thursday of every month, they do queer chat. And it's where people just bring different ideas, thoughts, and questions about current issues within the, co the, the community, um, current debates, current different controversies and stuff like that. And they talk about where they stand or their own identity. So it's more, um, I think it has more of a political agenda mm -hmm. than the regular meetings. So Long Beach had its 30th anniversary of its Gay Pride Festival mm -hmm. just last May. And what is it like to live in a city that embraces the gay community like Long Beach does? Um, to, to live in a city? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't live in Long Beach, but I have to say I did live in Long Beach. and I mean, it's great. Broadway in particular is mm -hmm. a very um, LGBT kind of queer yeah, street. Everywhere you go, there's, there's flags and stuff like that. You know, but at the same time, a couple years ago at the Falcon, which is a predominantly gay gay bar, mm -hmm. there was a man who was beat up in there for, someone asked him if he was gay, and he got beat up, a gay man got beat up in a gay bar. So mm -hmm. I think that just like anything else, mm -hmm. whether you're gay or straight or, you know, whatever your ethnicity is, there's, there's good things and then there's always still bad things. Mm -hmm. There's always room for improvement. If, since Long Beach seems to really uh, have a community of LBGT, mm -hmm. does it make CSU'll be a, a better community for LBGT? Um, I like that question, or I like that you're bringing that up, because a lot of times people assume that we are here at CSULB, we must be um, queer friendly, LGBT friendly, and not to say that we are not, because I think that we are, but I don't think that CSULB is a mirror of the city of Long Beach, only because mm -hmm. Long Beach is a really, really large city. And there are places still in Long Beach that obviously are not, you know, gay friendly or LGBT friendly. Um, I would say that the campus does the best that we can. And again, you know, we also don't know what our community really is. We track on applications and all acceptance of students' admissions, mm -hmm. gender markers of male or female, and then race and ethnicity, but we have never tracked. Um, gen like gender identity, meaning you know queer, gender queer, or sexual identity. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to say if CSULB really mirrors that because we don't have a way of tracking that right now or a policy intact to really measure it. And how important would you say student involvement is in order to get this going? Um, I think that student involvement is really good with that and a, a big part of it. But I also think a lot of it is that's the staff. Uh, administration kind of issue, policy kind of issue. We are currently looking at that. I am serving on a committee right now that is looking at campus um, climate um, for, for the community and we are trying to figure out ways, we are at least acknowledging that that is something we need to do. And it's good that you guys are trying to grow and expand. Mm -hmm. And let mm -hmm. me ask you a personal sure. question. Sure. What drives your passion to work with the LBGT community? Well, I identify as queer. Um, I, I don't think I am like the epitome of what queer looks like for many people, mm -hmm. but I feel queer. I've always identified as queer. Um, 
And my, my passion, I guess, is more of a matter of I feel at home. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, my, it's my home. It's, the community has always been loving to me and open to me. And it's, um, the, uh, I guess, the place where I found my, myself, my true identity for me. Well, Mary Beth, thank you very much thank for being you. here today. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate that you're talking to us about these very serious uh, topics. Thank you thank very you. much. Have a thank good day. you. Coming up, we have the director of the Equal Opportunity Program, who will share how they are bringing diversity to Cal State Long Beach. Never look a howler monkey in the eye. We built the entire library out of recycled bottles. Fried ants are delicious. We finished a clinic in our, in our rainstorm. Really? That was a confidence builder. My students actually ended up teaching me. So I learned this dance. I'll show you this dance. In la keg, a la keen. The classroom was, was more of a class tent. I think managing a sales team is tough. <laughs> Try working with five different villages. My alarm clock was a rooster. Beans for breakfast, beans for lunch, beans for dinner. We ate a lot of beans. I learned a third language. My seatmate on the bus was a goat. Always include the village elders, always. My morning commute was by canoe. After two months, I was ready to quit, but after two years, I didn't want to leave. I didn't know I had it in me. Turn two years of service into a lifetime of experience. To all the Peace Corps volunteers, past, present, and future, thank you for your service to your country and the world. California is a place that gravitates people from all walks of life. Most recently, CNBC named the Los Angeles Long Beach Glendale area as their number one diversity in America. Which can explain why Cal State Long Beach has made being a diverse campus as one of its core values in their mission statement. Being a diverse university isn't simply strived by CSULB, but it's a reality that is evident the minute you step onto campus and see faculty and student faces. At Cal State Long Beach, diversity in ethnicity flourishes with 71% of undergraduate students who are of another ethnicity besides Caucasian. Location might be a strong factor in why CSULB has such a diverse campus, but the university's success story comes from how they keep attracting and maintaining a diverse campus, various departments and organizations that consistently advocate and strive to support and attract students and faculty from various demographics is an essential part of how they are succeeding at this. The Multicultural Center at CSULB is a hub for various cultural organizations to seek support and funding for their student clubs. They also have played a strong role in advocating and fighting to keep ethnic study degree programs at Cal State Long Beach in a time when budget cuts endangered some of them. EOP is another program that is bringing diversity to Cal State Long Beach in a different way. EOP paves the way for diversity at Cal State Long Beach by providing admission to ethnic and low-income students that would not otherwise have an opportunity to attend university like Cal State Long Beach. They provide both financial and counseling groups for their students to succeed in a college environment. Um, EOP brings diversity in a different way because they try the most to get to know their students really well. So not just, oh, here's some tips on how to improve your, your semester, your time here, your major, but based on each student's situation or background that they bring to. Welcome back to Tuning In. I'm Bianca Lamus, and I'm here with Andy Espinosa, Director of the Educational Opportunity Program at Cal State Long Beach. Andy, thank you for being here today. You're welcome. As the director of EOP, you have been involved with a lot of the programs that have developed at the center. It's, it's from the counselors and from the students that want to uh, help develop these programs. It just doesn't come from me. It's a whole network of people. I mean, we've been able to develop a foster youth network, so we're available to, to not only our foster youth at, at, at EOP, but the campus's foster youth. We're trying to grow the program so that we also are, uh, are affiliated with ASI so that we can get funding uh, for more students. Uh, we now are seeing AB 540 students. Um, uh, now, because of the chancellor mandate, we take AB 540. They're part of our student population. But even before then, we were taking AB 540 students and making our services available, um, not 
financial aid because that's that's not part of the the law uh, as of yet. But um, but simply simply put, we've uh, you know we've uh, made things available for them. We made a laptop loan program because students wanted laptops. They needed them because they were. Um, uh, they're a low-income first generation. They didn't have these resources. We made them available. We created a um, uh, computer lab with free paper because they needed they needed some place so they could connect with us to do their work, to check their emails, and then you know hopefully to come in for their for their advising. So we've developed that. We have a tutorial center uh, in our office because the students said they wanted that. They needed that. They needed math and they needed English, and they needed some sciences uh, so that they could get one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on uh, hands advising, and have a place for, uh, for uh, them to, uh, to connect, see their tutors, and get valuable information uh, from the tutor. Plus, we have a, a lounge that students can go in. Uh, it's wired, so students can go in, take their, their laptops, or, or uh, you know, take their laptops and um, and do their studying there. So we've done, we try to do a lot of things that have been more student friendly, but it's emanated also from students, the counselors, the staff. So it's not just me. EOP brings students who are historically low income to the program. Right. And how, what does what does the program look like? Is it primarily like students who are Hispanic of uh, ethnicity? It's it's for historically low income first generation students. Mm -hmm. When this when the bill was enacted in 1969 called the Harmer Bill, it was very it was it was out of the civil rights movement. It was very clear that they that they wanted the verbiage to be less about ethnicities and more about low income first generation. So mm -hmm. what we have is a program that that accepts anyone who is low income first generation. Now the word historically low income comes in simply because that's the verbiage that we as all the directors want to keep in because uh, those folks that it was kind of created for, you know, uh, those are historic are still the same folks that are still low income today. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, so it is Southeast Asians, it is Cambodian students, it is Latinos, it is African American, it's poor, poor Caucasians. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that the the system was not able to to create opportunity educa educational opportunity and to change the system you need educational educational opportunity you need to be educated and you know hopefully that that you'll be able to apply for those jobs that you that 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 uh, that you were educated for mm -hmm. yeah. and EOP is trying to change the this face of historically in low income students right right. And these programs that you guys provide are actually quite essential for them because you have your laptop program, and nowadays you can buy an Apple for maybe four thousand and maybe a cheaper laptop for four hundred. But these are this is money that these students don't have. So you right. guys have these programs that are really important for them. No, absolutely, they're important for them because nowadays, you know, uh, you, they can you know you can get your uh, your. Um, I can't think of what it's called right now. Your plug-in for the the computer. I mean, you can take your, that that the USB the USB any place, you know, and and use that any place. So it becomes uh, it becomes quite a tool now that you can take come to our center, but also go go other places where you need to. And every place is wired on Cal State at Cal State Long Beach, so it's and important. You guys have another program, the Foster Youth Network. Right. Can you elaborate on what that is? Well. We don't have a full program like other campuses have, like uh, like Fullerton or Pomona, but we made it. We called it a network because now we have students that come in uh, from you know they don't necessarily have to be EOP, but they come in and they 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 connect with each other. What we do is we bring we bring social workers, we bring other programs from out of the area, from out of Cal State Long Beach. To connect with these students, to give them the resources, or tell them about resources that are available to them, as uh, as as foster as former foster youth, and uh, what happens is that they 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 connect with each other and they start sharing these stories based on the information that's given to them by these outside, you know, social agencies, and what happens is then they're able to to say, well, you know what, uh, I might be available to get that resource or that resource. So it makes it more important to them that they're getting the, the, their connection 
uh, from outside continues with them here at the university. And we've got them from all over, the United Friends of the Children. We've got uh, social workers from L.A. County, from Orange County, uh, people that, that deal with foster youth on a day-to-day -day basis. So we make it available for them. And then we have little things for them, like uh, we have mixers for them every, every two weeks so they can, they can uh, join with each other, connect. And, you know, our students are doing very well, you know. Um, we've got a... a, 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 a AS Senator, uh, we've got students that are getting uh, all kinds of scholarships that are really doing real well, uh, um, not just because of EOP, but because of, of, of who they are and their... their yes, and your students yeah. are not just uh, receiving, they're also giving back to the university. On actually October 19th, EOP students went and did a beach cleanup. And so this demonstrates that not only are you guys helping the community, but you're helping these students at Cal State Long Beach give back to the community. How important is this for your students to participate in? Right, that's part of what's called our EOP student organization. Now, part of their charge is to do community work. They've done community work since their inception. That was very important for them. You know, they're going to be, they, they've, done, uh, um, they've done a beach cleanup. They've done uh, uh, book selling. They've done uh, uh, fundraising. Mm -hmm. And this spring, they're going to actually be, uh, they've gotten AS funded to do an uh, outreach, func outreach function. So they're going to be outreaching to several schools, bringing schools here. Uh, so students will be uh, aware of not only the university, but hopefully EOP as well. And how have you seen students come back and to tell you how EOP has impacted their their studies. Well, interesting that you should say that. Today I opened up some mail and there was a book and the book had a card in it and I, I said, oh, this is great. It must be, it must be some, somebody, some publisher trying to, trying to sell us a book. Well, I opened it up and it was, it was something from a student that said, I remember. I remember EOP. Thank you. I'm published now. Mm -hmm. So you get back, you know, uh, you, don't, you don't know when you're going to get back, but you do get back because students will remember, and they remember that you, that, you, that, you re that you respected them, that you respected their story, that you respected their parents' dream for them, uh, that you listened, that you cajoled, that you worked with them, uh, and that you had their best interest at heart. So that's why students usually, you, they, they will remember. Andy, so can you tell me what are your hopes for the program and how would you like to see it expand? Well, we've been around for 44 years. I'd like to see us be around for another 44 years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I would be, I wouldn't be a good administrator if I wouldn't say that I, I expanding, I wish that we had more dollars so we can affect more students. You know, I wish we had, um, in many ways, more dollars to affect all of our programming, including financial aid for students. Uh, you know, I know that the students will generally tell us exactly what they need for us to, 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 uh, to grow. But, you know, right now I think that, uh, you know, more of a, of a, of a connection with, with, with students, you know, offer them different things, uh, different opportunities within the program, uh, mentoring uh, uh, par uh, possibilities, um, tutoring possibilities, those things that help them grow as leaders as well. I, I'd like to be able for them to say, you know what, I, I, uh, I became part of the program because, uh, you know, I not only am getting counseling, but I'm also helping other students. Mm -hmm. uh, we've developed a strong peer advising component, uh, and we've had it for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, Almost 40 years we've had the peer advising component, and that's strong. But I'd like to see more peer tutoring. I'd like to see more um, students that are working in the student organizations uh, that really become full-fledged leaders and really share with us our, their, their ideas because we can't grow without students. I think sometimes we forget that we're in an institution to serve students, and we tend to think that we know sometimes what's best for students, and therefore our, you know, our programming you know, looks like that. But basically, our, you know, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have enough money and use the money wisely so that they, they, we can make sure that their, need, their, their needs are taken care of. 
Andy, I'd like to thank you for being here today and letting us uh, talk about EOP and how it's adding a very diverse face to Cal State Long Beach. Thank, thank you, you for very being much. here. Appreciate it. Have thank a good you. Day. Thank you very much.